Hello. Okay, so we're into section two of key area one. This will be the last of key area one. Quite a nice short one, I suppose, uh, compared to a lot of the course. And this is on neural pathways. So we'll be covering um, the movement of signals through neural. Okay, so uh, in terms of the neural pathway, you learn a bit about the kind of pathways of nerves and things in that five, but you're about to learn quite a lot more about it over the next few um, key areas. Uh, so neural pathway is basically just the route that the signal takes through the nervous system. So you learn about the idea, it goes sensory, intermotor neurons and how they go through them. Um, but looking a bit more like at it, there are three main types of neural pathways that we're going to talk about in this video. One of them is converging, one of them is diverging, one of them is reverberating. Now, if you know what these words mean, you can kind of figure out what they're going to be like anyway, if you've got a basic grasp of what those words actually mean. So should be relatively straightforward. Yep. Okay, so a converging neural pathway is when something's converging, it means it's, it's joining together to a single point, essentially. So in a converging neural pathway, several neurons can pass signals to one particular neuron. So in the diagram there, we've got the two grey neurons are converging together onto the purple neuron, and that is sending that signal down there. Now, the advantage of this, and this is something you do need to know, is that several weak signals can come together in order to generate an impulse. This allows for increased sensitivity, okay, and you do need to know that which is why it's underlined so you need to know this idea of converging neural pathways increases sensitivity because several weak signals can come together now an yeah. example of this we i was just going to say it's important to know it doesn't just need to be two it can be three four five you know, mm. it can be any number of them as long as there is more than one converging together now an example of this which you don't need to know you don't need to be able to give examples in an exam situation of uh, functions of this but an example just to set a little bit of context for you is seeing in low levels of light okay so converging neural pathways from rods in the retina so the back of your eye mean that we can have vision in very very low levels of light the idea is each tiny neuron in the back of your eye picks up a tiny signal and then passes that down the main optic nerve allowing for a signal to be generated okay um, and this allows us to detect movement and distinguish between objects obviously not in color but allows for vision in low light which is good for survival and not dying being snuck up on or tripping over objects uh, second one which is diverging neural pathways again pretty much does what it says in the tin if they diverge they go apart so that last time it was two or more neur uh, nerves coming together this time it is going from one to two or more um, so basically one signal from the nervous system is then going to be divided up into two or three or four neurons. So you can see in this case we start with the green neuron and the signal is then passed on to two different grey neurons. So it is being split between the two of them. Now again, there's an important thing you need to know about it. Uh, this means that several neurons can be controlled using one signal and this allows for more coordination between muscles and movement. So that's the important thing you need to know that bit that's underlined. So the idea, it allows more coordination between muscles and movements when it is a diverging neural pathway. And again, here's another example of it. If nothing else, it's just a really nice gif. It is. You don't really need to know this, like we said in the last one, but it's just a useful example of it. So diverging ones allow for much more fine motor control. So it's got, because it's got that link to your muscles, it means you've got a much better control and in this case it allows you to balance rocks beautifully which is a skill i wish that i had and um, so it just it allows for better coordination and just much more fine motor controls within your muscles to allow you to perform more complex tasks okay reverberating neural pathways is the last one in a reverberating neural pathway a neuron at the start of a pathway is linked to a neuron at the end no Yes, it's the, the end one is linked to the start one, it's more accurate there, okay? So the idea is you get a signal generated down a neural pathway and then one links back to near the start and what that allows to do is the signal essentially loops back and re-triggers itself. Now what this means is that pathway can be repeatedly stimulated allowing for continuous operation of that pathway. Again, that's the effect of the reverberating pathway you need to know. Most common exam question that I've seen about all of these actually is about reverberating pathways and it's a picture of it and you've got to identify it from its picture and you've got to go, oh, well that one's going back to the start, so that's reverberating. Nice mark. So uh, an example of it, again, you don't need to be able to say this in an exam, but breathing is an example of a process that relies on a reverberating neural pathway. It's a continuous rhythmic process um, that involves stimulating that reverberating pathway, making sure that your lungs and your diaphragm well, not really your lungs, it's more the intercostal muscles and your diaphragm are constantly operational. Your lungs don't actually have any, any involvement in the muscular movement at all. Okay, so 
that is the end of this key area. Mm -hmm. Here's a summary of your neural pathways. Hopefully this video was nice and straightforward for you. So the first one, a converging pathway, it is, or an advantage of it is the fact it can increase sensitivity. An example of when that is useful is being able to see in the dark. Okay, diverging pathways allow for more coordination and fine motor control. Okay, uh, examples, balancing rocks, sewing, surgery, playing a musical instrument, that kind of thing. Uh, and the final one, reverberating, so when one of the later neurons links back to one of the earlier ones, it allows for continuous operation of that pathway. An example of that is breathing. But again, you don't really need to know the examples, you only really need to know the type of pathway and the advantage or use of them. Now, that is us done with this uh, key area. So the next key area is the cerebral cortex. Um, so we'll be releasing that video in the next week or so. Um, and we'll be looking to cover the cerebral cortex, also known from last year as the cerebrum. Is that what we had to call it in National 5? The, yeah, the cerebrum. Yeah. So it might be a good idea to have a look at your cerebrum stuff before you embark upon that. Okay, see you then.